Welcome to AC Milan News. Today, 7th, uh, July 27th, we are here with Antonio, the guru of the transfer market. How are you doing, Antonio? Very good, Roy. I'm nervous for this transfer market, but I'm doing pretty good today. Oh, okay. Well, um, let's see what, what, what you have for us today. Guys, but before getting into the news, uh, just uh, quick updates about the channel. Remember, we do have a chat room now that you can uh, enjoy, and it's going to be there indefinitely. You can use it whenever you want and keep the AC Milan dialogue going. Uh, we have a new poll, so go and check it out. Go and vote who you think is the youngster that you're more curious to see in these upcoming friendlies. And uh, guys, stay tuned for our lives coming up during the week. Let's talk Milan, the Milan Forum, uh, Red and Black Sundays. All right, Antonio, let's get into the news. What is happening today in the Milan universe? So just to start off, like I usually do about the club, um, we have it was a big day at Milanello because you saw Manyan, Giroud, and Rebic all had their first training session, so okay. that was very interesting. Um, and Kier is was not there; he probably had an extended vacation, um, and he's likely to come back either this week or at the beginning of next week. We don't know exactly when, but okay. um, he's estimated to be back soon. All right. Well, nice. Good. I did see uh, uh, a nice post by Salamakers calling uh, the, the group family. Good words. I like that. Uh, yep. Giroud in the picture was uh, nice to see. Yeah, Giroud looks like he has a great, good personality right now. He's always, he looks happy. And uh, Tomori actually posted something on his story that had, since they played together at Chelsea. So they're friends. Oh, uh, okay. Good. That's good. All right. Okay, and then just an update about the next friendly. Just just to say it again, it's going to be this Saturday against Nice in Nice. Um, different timing. Uh, it's going to be, I think, a bit later than the recent friendlies. So wherever you are, it'll be a couple hours later. Um, and, yeah, Milan will be playing Nice. Like I said, Christophe Galtier is the coach. They're League One side, upper half table side, and they should be getting better this year. So, interesting game. Yes, uh, competitive. This is going to be a competitive game. This is not going to be like Modena. It's not going to be like Processo. This is going to be much more competitive. So we're finally, finally... Milan, we're, go we're, go we're going to see a competitive Milan again after a few months of break. Yep, and it will be the most competitive game we've played since the end of the season. So, yeah, we're slowly getting more uh, acclimated to the new the comp level of competition, and August is going to be an intense month because everything will start up again in August, and the Champions League draw, so... All right, yeah, and we are going to have a live watch along for the Champions League draw. So, guys, please uh, be in touch and in tune for that. So excited for that. Um, okay, so that's basically it for the club news. Um, there's all there's a lot of AC Milan women news, but we're just going to stick with the men's team for now. Okay. Um, so the first player that there's been a bit of an update on is Kyle George. And this is a crazy saga with three different teams being linked with him. Um, mm. According to sky sport, um, Milan have may have actually made an official offer of 5 million to Santos for him. Okay. So that's a little bit better than what, like two to 3 million. Um, and this isn't like a super huge deal because other clubs are a bit, ahead of us and how much they want to pay for him. But he's really interested in uh, Milan. The player really likes to – would prefer uh, Milan over definitely Benfica and probably a bit more than Juventus considering that he's outwardly agreed and stated that he likes Milan. So that is where we're at. We don't know what's going to happen. Uh, the other teams, just to summarize again, Benfica and Juventus are willing to put down more money um, for Kyle George. And – the player has apparently agreed to personal terms, I think, or his agent agreed to personal terms with you, uh, Juventus. 
Um, but he does not really want to go to Benfica. I don't think he would mind Juventus too much, but he would prefer Milan as his first choice. So that's where we're at with him. So uh, Juventus is winning this battle right now, it looks like. I would say that there's a greater chance that he out of the three teams that Juventus goes, but it's very close. But I would say that it's probably Juventus because they're willing to pay more than Milan and the agent would like – you know, he would, the player would accept the move, and the agent has kind of agreed to personal terms. So, yeah. well, the Juventus uh, uh, news and all that stuff, they they think it's pretty much uh, a done deal. Um, but uh, I know that today it's not yet a done deal. It's not yet. It's still open in the air. But uh, well, we'll see. We'll see how this uh, saga continues. Uh, Kyra George, to be honest with you, is not a player that really you know, um, sparks a lot of excitement for me. But uh, we'll see how this goes. We'll see how this goes. Yeah, I'm just going to make a little joke and say, Roy, how, why are you subscribed to the Juventus News? Um, just got just to gotta throw that out there. But, uh, yeah, but like, like you said, they're, they're very confident. But um, yeah. it's not, like, close to being a done deal because – it's complicated. I think the club and the player are going to have to negotiate like what they want to do together because they're getting yeah. different uh, requests. So, yeah. Okay. Good. Yep. Um, okay. So the next player isn't like a big superstar, but he is. He would be a primavera player, and there's been a couple updates about him, and we talked about him before. But he is similar to Warren Bondo. He's a 17 year old. Uh, midfielder and he plays okay. in um, Belgium uh, for Jenk or G N K. That's the yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So Pierre Duomo's his name. And ah, yes, very good, exciting prospect. This one here, I'm more excited about. Yeah, he is very young, so he'd be a Primavera player. And he did post uh, on his Instagram when links were kind of just starting. He posted like a rumor, like post saying about him going to Milan. So he actually did kind of confirm the rumors. Um, so the updates about him, there's two pieces of updates. The first is that he apparently is training by himself now because he got into an argument with his coach at uh, Jank. And I don't really know if this is because of the transfer and because he's like acknowledged it or for some other reason, but he is training away from the team. So and that's basically like a sign that he's going to be moving on because the coach kind of removed him from the team. So they're trying to figure out how to like best conclude that relationship. Um, so that's very interesting. So possibly a very cheap uh, transfer opportunity. And just I'll say the other piece of news that's about him is that Inter are also watching this player. So they're Inter have kind of joined the race um, just to watch him. So, that's just – those are just the updates about him. All right. Yeah, he's a very – I like I, – I saw some of his highlights. And, uh, you know, again, highlights, you, you only see snippets of, of moments uh, during the game. You don't see – you don't really see how a player interprets a whole 90-minute game. But technically, this player is very, very promising. Uh, his dribbles are very good, a very creative player. So this would be an excellent addition for the Primavera. You know, uh, a star today is a star of tomorrow. So let's uh, let's hope that this one goes through. This one I'm very excited about. Yeah, let's see how it goes. Yeah, and also reminded me of Warren Bondo. I don't really have any updates on him, and it's kind of mysterious because there's really nothing new about him, so there's no confirmation that it was a done deal. I, I would assume it's still very close to being done, but I guess the gap is still there, like a very small gap that yep. Milan doesn't want to bridge. Um, but I would hope that we confirm this because we need to keep reinforcing the youth uh, team. So, Yeah, agreed. Okay, let's move on. Okay, um, the next news about uh, Paul Bega because Spezia are looking to loan him out again. Um, so there's that. And Milan, I've read one report that said that Milan would be open to selling him for – only 12 million and i hope that i mean i haven't heard too much confirmation about this but i think if public keeps getting chances uh in the, the upcoming friendlies he's gonna i don't think there's much truth to this because he's showing that he's a good player 
So I would say that maybe there's a bit of an increase in chances that he does get sold this summer just because of recent news. But I still wouldn't say there's a very good chance of that happening. And I I wouldn't say there's like a majority chance of that happening. So it's very complex with him right now. But I would think that loaning him out to Spezia again is a very likely possibility. So that's just that just is what came out today about him. Yeah, look, uh, the Povega saga is another one that, to me, uh, unfortunately, it uh, brings sadness because, you know, I'm all about these young Italian players that, you know, Povega also has a lot of history with the uh, with the national team, starting from the, I believe, the U15 and going all the way to the U21. So this is a player that has the similar trajectory to many players that ended up in the national team and winning big games with the national team. So to me, we, it seems like we, we're on the verge of losing one of these players once again, like Cristante, Pessina, um, and the other guys that are slipping my mind right now. But, uh, but... Yeah, exactly. And, and there are others, others, others too. But uh, a loan, if we do loan him out, I said this yesterday, good, because he gets one more year of experience fighting and hustling. And then at 23, that magic year, 23, when he comes back, he'll be ready for us. But Milan right now seems to be more interested in the, in the French players. So if you're an Italian player, you get the X. If you're a French player, you get uh, the ace. So that's uh, where we are right now with that. Ah, okay, let's move on. Yep, and um, to remember, French players are the main. Like France is the main uh, country that our scouts are focused on. We have a French, a couple French scouts, and our chief of scouting uh, is French, and he's from Monaco. So that's probably why you're seeing that. Right, and to me, you know, I'm because I support the national team a lot. Okay, I love the national team. For me, is Man, I love the national team. It's disappointing that we're helping more of the French national team than actually the Italian national team. But, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I Let's... think I think what you said, um, you've made this point many times when you say that in, in, Italian players are a bit slower to develop, um, either physically or in, just all around. And so a lot of the times, like, it's actually a smart decision to look at France because they have a lot of – you get really young players that mature fast and you can actually sell them and they for a lot of money because their value increases. Um, so that's probably why they're trying to do this. And I think it's a smart choice, but I still think that we should uh, develop our uh, homegrown Italian players too. Yeah. So it's like, a, I think finding a good mix is a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. Okay. Um, the next is just an update about Vlasic. So, there is a ah. st- there is a stalemate um, between Moscow and Milan. Um, Moscow Milan originally offered a uh, five million loan and a twenty million option to buy, and Moscow do, did not accept this. They basically they value the player at thirty million, um, and okay. if they they were to let him go, they want either an obligation to buy or just outright uh, to buy him. They don't want to do like loans because. They want to try to get guaranteed uh, revenue. So right, they want to monetize for sure. Yeah. So just an update about him. He's, you know, he's very. He really wants to go to Milan. Said it multiple times. Um, but right now the clubs are kind of stuck, and other names are being looked at. So we don't know what's going to happen if they can unblock this stalemate or not. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I don't think we're going to see this. Till uh, well, August is is around the corner, but um, maybe the last two weeks of August, I think these kind of deals are going to start unlocking. But who knows? They they might unlock even before that. But the last two weeks of August are going to be the key key moments. Yeah. Um, I don't rush. Yeah, I'm trying looking up the exact date of the uh, the end of the transfer market, um, and I will pull that up, but. I think yeah, it's usually the last day of August. Yeah, so the season the season would have started um, already yeah. because we're starting in August. So I would think that we're going to start to see like a lot of these players, you know, start that we're linked with every every once in a while. We'll, we'll see like a 
maybe a deal getting closer, but we're not sure exactly which direction they want the management wants to go. So it's right, right. pretty crazy right now. Okay, so there you go, Blazic. Uh, anything else? What else? Um, yeah, so Romagnoli, just an update about him that he, he does have some interest from different clubs, and he could maybe we could see some offers come in for him, depending on you know if the clubs decide to make a move. But basically, he's a left-footed center back, so that makes him pretty valuable to some teams. Um, Juventus are interested in him because they're looking like they're going to lose Demiral and probably another center back. Um, and also there's Barcelona who are interested. They've been interested in him for a little while because they want another left-footed center back. Um, so there is interest for Romagnoli. I don't know how much we can get from him, but Milan apparently have rejected um, the proposed swap deal for Bernardeschi. That was for proposed by Raiola. They've, Milan are not interested in that, so mm. that is what's come out with that. Well, look, uh, I guess right now it's uh, good to be Romagnoli. I mean, uh, you got Juventus and Barcelona after you, uh, and you're playing at Milan. Well, I mean, uh, for us, this player was the worst player that ever existed in the world a few months ago, but, you know, I guess uh, life is good for him since uh, he's got huge clubs after him. And it's true, being a left-footed uh, uh, central defender is um, is not is unique. It's not most of them are right-footed. So, yeah, good for him, man. I honestly hope we keep Romagnoli um, and just uh, go till the end of his contract because this year in the Champions League, the Scudetto, we need three at least three big defenders. That was our history. We've always had three or four huge, big defenders. So um, let's see how this one go uh, pans out. Yeah, and I think if Pioli was to experiment with a back three, that'd be interesting to see if yes. that did happen. So yes, yeah, absolutely. Yep. So we don't know, but there's a. Like, I'm just going to repeat what I've said in the past that right now Romagnoli, he's willing to stay, and the club doesn't really want is not looking to sell him. The only problem is that extending his contract is difficult because he's with a Rai alum and they want a lot of money and it's going to expire next year. Yeah. So basically, you know, we could end up losing him for free next year if this happens. So that right. that's the only reason why there's like links. Okay. All right. Yeah, okay. and we could monetize him right now. Maybe, maybe if they sell him now and get some money out of it, then we can get maybe we can buy another player. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, let's move on. Okay, uh, the next player is Josip Ilicic. Uh -huh. There have been recent rumors saying that Ilicic is a player that's being looked at for his versatility and his depth that he will uh, add to the squad. Um, so that means looking like a role player or a rotational player. Um, I mean, I'm guessing this is going to be a very cheap transfer. So if this did happen, that's why we're just looking at him. I don't know. I think I'm guessing Pioli is interested in the player. There's not really much news saying that this is like happening, but he's just like a profile that, like I've said before, if he if we can't secure a deal for another player, he is a very likely to join if we just want to get somebody like last minute or something like that. So. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <clears throat> okay. Yep. Um, the next player is Double K. I'm just going to call him. Yes. My favorite player, Vicha Varaskilia. I have learned his name because I want to say his name many times in the upcoming season when he does assist and scores goals for us. Let's so, hope. Please, let's hope. Yeah, so you're not gonna like this too much. Oh no, <laughs> it's not. Too, it's not bad, horrible news, but it's just that Tottenham uh, are interested in him a lot, and they're they're deciding whether or not to bid um, to make a bid for him. Milan haven't made a bid for him, so like I said before, there's only really just interest in the player from Milan right now. So nothing advanced whatsoever, and no updates about him as of now. But basically, all the Russian news was not really reliable they were saying it was a done deal which is nowhere near being a done deal okay okay so yep still a possibility all right okay that's fine let's move on 
Okay, um, and then the next player is just a little update. Uh, Milan are still working on finding an agreement with Manchester United for Dalo. Um, mm-hmm. They're trying to do a loan with option to buy. We're not sure if Manchester United is going to accept this, but there a lot of Manchester United fans are complaining. They're like, "Why doesn't? Why don't they just buy him outright?" But you know, yeah, yeah, they yeah. have too much. They, they they spend too much money. So we are getting a, a certain reputation now of a. Uh... Of a cheap club that is uh, is operating in uh, this way, we're pissing off a lot of the uh, fans from other uh, other countries, etc. Hey, but you know what? We will piss you m- more. We'll piss you off even more during the Champions League. Trust me. So yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not against these loan uh, with options because, like you saw with Tomori, like we actually like. We bought him for twenty eight million. So it's like if if the player proves himself, then they act. The club is willing to spend the money. I think so. I think it's a good idea. All right. Okay. Especially because we we couldn't we can never afford to just right, take, right. A, take a giant risk like that without not, a, not in this moment. Right. Not in this moment. Um, but the law, yeah, excellent, excellent uh, piece of the puzzle. If we are able to get him. I think our defense, if we get the law as well, man, our defense is going to be solid. So yeah, let's uh, let's see how that one turns out too. Yep. Um, and then the last player is just Julian Brandt because uh-huh. Julian Brandt, a piece of discussion here on the Rossonari TV. Everybody is fighting uh, over uh, the value of this player, the technical value of this player. All right, let's go. Julian Brandt is. Milan are really monitoring him, but there's a lot of real interest. And there has been confirmations in Germany that were very interested in him, which is important because German news is actually one of the most reliable news uh, sources usually um, for different players. But basically, word we are, Milan is scouting him. Um, the other piece of news is that Lazio is also interested in him as well. Yeah. So there is like an interest there. Um from Saudi and it's interesting because he can play different positions. He can play more of a deeper midfielder or an attacking midfielder. So there's diversity there. Um, he wouldn't be, people are saying that the value of the deal, like a 5 million loan and then a 20 million or 22 million buy option. They're saying that that's feasible for Milan to actually uh, pay, which is true, but yeah. it may be risky if he doesn't really, if he's not successful. So that, that's right. Not- um, one thing that Dormant uh, right now has is money. And so they they, they got a huge uh, pocket of change from uh, Manchester United. So they'll probably be an easier club to, to negotiate with. Right now, they, they are in a good position. I did also see that there's this possible exchange between Leao and Brent, right? Yeah, I talked about that a bit um, yesterday, but there is that option um, because Dorman have been interested in layout a little bit. And we, you know, with the space that there is available when you play in Germany, like it looks like Lau would probably do well in Germany. Um, so if Milan were to make a, some sort of swap deal, like that is a possibility. But I don't know if they're going to take that risk on Brandt because they know the, that Leao is has quality and – he can maybe improve. So, well, look. If uh, okay, I'm going to say something that might piss some people off, but I'll say it anyway. If uh, we make this exchange, Brandt Leal, that opens the doors for Evicha Varashkilia. So we will have Brandt as our cam and Vicha on the left. Yes, sign me up. And uh, Leal will have a great career at Dortmund. If that were to happen, if not, I'm very happy keeping Leal. And I honestly, as I said before, think this is going to be Leal's year. Uh, this is going to be a magic year for Leal. And then next year, it'll be his confirmation. And then we'll see uh, what happens from there, there on. Yep. So you are very, very interested in the Vicha. Oh, yeah. This player is is uh, is uh, something special, man. I think that uh, where, wherever he joins, He's going to be making a lot of headlines, and um, and then then a lot of people will will regret uh, the fact that AC Milan didn't get him. But because I know Maldini, I know I know the mentality that he comes from, right? 
And I know the kind of players that have always been the players that made Milan fans, you know, dream and all that. And uh, those, th this player, Vicha, is perfect for Serie A and perfect for AC Milan. So I, I don't believe these stories that they're not interested in him. I think they're, they're just playing it cool for, for now. Yeah, there is interest. So Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. that, that's basically all I have. There's not much. I mean, we're going to probably expect to see more news come out later on in the day, but I don't know. Uh, nothing major. Um, so we'll see where this takes us, but August is going to be a crazy month. All right, Antonio, thank you so much. That was excellent. Thank you for updating us with all the news of the day. Guys, everybody, please like, share, subscribe participate in the lives and also vote on the poll remember guys we put up a poll today asking which youngster would you be most interested in seeing in these upcoming friendlies against nice valencia real madrid and panathinaikos all right uh antonio thank you so much we will see you tomorrow uh with ac milan news with the new updates to everybody 